week. Thank you for everybody who stands up for freedom. Uh, I have a question. Why? Why would anybody not support the Bill of Rights? Or any portion of it? Why would you not? Exactly. You've got a couple different attitudes. And that's, I mean, the people down, I mean, you've got the Republicans for Pete's sake. They're the ones who are supposed, oh, we're all Second Amendment, sure, we're there for you. Why? I think you got two types of people. You got, first of all, those people who look at the Bill of Rights and the Constitution as a flawed document. A flawed document? The president thinks that. He gave a speech uh, many years ago where he said it's a negative document. It talks about the things the government uh, can't do to you, but it doesn't say what they must do on your behalf. That's because what the government is supposed to do on my behalf is stay the hell out of my life. How simple is that? So you've got people like him that look at it as a negative document. I look at it as divine and beautiful. It's an amazing, wonderful document. So you've got those people who look at it like it's flawed. And then you've got people who they don't care one way or the other. They're just, as Phil said, people that are trying to get reelected. And that's what we have right now. A lot of people that have managed to walk that line Gather a few votes from people who are pro-Second Amendment by saying, oh, I was sure, Second Amendment. They may even speak at a rally here or there. But the proof is in their actions. And there are members of Congress, some of the ones right down there, some other elected servants that have not been true to the things they claim. So why wouldn't they stand up for that one amendment? I mean, I don't understand why you would single it out. I'm sure there are people that would uh, have no problem saying, yes, free speech all the way, or any of the other uh, pieces of the Bill of Rights. They'd be all behind that. So why not that one? Why, why do you se uh, segregate that one? And the truth is because it's a good hot-button issue. So you've got the people that, that don't feel it's a divine document. You've got some of the others that think, well... I'm going to go ahead and ride the fence on this. Hot button issue, so I'll ride the fence. What they don't know is, I'm shopping for candidates. I am in the season where I am shopping for candidates. And no longer am I going to be tied to you're a Democrat or Republican or you're from a certain area, you say certain things. I want proof. I want proof. And if you're not doing your job, you're out of there. You know a guy? <laughs> yeah, I started thinking, imagine if you were to use some of the arguments they always use about the Second Amendment with other pieces of the Bill of Rights, like that waiting period for free speech. <laughs> sure, you can say what you, yes, we're all about free speech, we just want you to wait seven or eight days, okay? Wait seven or eight days. How about a ban on certain types of religion? You know, I mean, you go, well... You know, religion can be dangerous, so <laughs> certain types. How about a ban on certain types of free speech in certain areas? Okay, you can say what you want in Richmond, but if you go to D.C., you leave your free speech at the gate. Yeah, I'll we'll say that. Yeah. What about um, some of the other arguments they use with the Second Amendment, like, um, oh, that newsstand loophole. You know, freedom of the press. We got to close that newsstand loophole. You don't want the press getting out of hand and actually reporting. You don't want that. That's a crazy notion. The truth. Yeah, exactly. The truth is, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, are an amazing, amazing, wonderful thing that that have to be defended in their entirety, and that's part of the reason we're here today. So again, thank you to all of you who are doing what you have to do. Thank you to Virginia Citizens Defense League for doing what they do. And I'll leave you once again with what I said on April 15th, what I said in D.C. at the Tea Party there, Liberty 101 and all the other events, and I'm quite serious about it. To all of you that are fighting for freedom, all of you that are doing what you have to do to stand up for my rights as well as your own and all other freedom-loving Americans, I pledge to you my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor. Thank you so much. I keep having to lower the microphone. I, I, I mean.
I don't know. I need elevator a soap shoes. Soapbox. A soapbox, yeah. yeah. I need a soapbox. I need a hole in the head. Um, also, I, I don't know if our vice president was here. Jim Snyder was here earlier. I didn't see him, so I didn't think to introduce him. But if, Jim, if you're here, raise your hand. He might have had to go back. Uh, he's up from Northern Virginia. Anyhow, also you might get to thank the people in these little green vests here. Uh, those are a lot of those are our executive members. Uh, these are the people that right below leadership uh, help us. Um, uh, basically, you know, they help with the group. They're out there giving us ideas, with the leadership ideas. They're doing the work. Well, these guys dug in and, and helped pull this together. And you really can't underestimate what they did. What they do. Okay, and uh, just wanted to introduce uh, Jim Snyder. Uh, our vice president, somebody again. I, I always feel bad because a lot of people are when they thank me for something. I, in my own mind, I kind of have to reflect back. Well, they're really thanking the organization. I'm just one person. If you just could only see my view of the group. <laughs> to see all the incredible people in this organization. But, Everybody here that showed up. Yeah, look at look at all you guys that showed up. It's, it's, it was cold and kind of drizzly for a while, and everybody showed up anyhow. And uh, that that helped. I mean, if there'd have been three of us standing out at the corner, we wouldn't have the same effect as 300. Okay, so you did a good job. Um, we're uh, at this point. I guess we're gonna let's go let's go eat. We want to you know again various restaurants are offering various specials to us, and again I think this is wonderful. Come the General Assembly time, when, when the re restaurant repeal comes up, I don't want them telling me the restaurants, for example, don't want us there. <laughs> They're lining up as they should be. To, to, you know, we're, we're good people. And um, we, uh, we've got restaurants in Richmond right now that are lining up that want us to hold meetings there. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at them stacking up. We don't do uh, that many Richmond meetings. I'm starting to think we may have to do one every couple months. Yeah. Just yeah. You know, just to help the restaurants out, you know. So uh, it sounds like people want to do that. Well, we'll do it. You know, we can uh, we can do that. I just have to get somebody to set the uh, set the meeting dates. I do one every month up in Northern Virginia. Then there's no reason Richmond. Richmond. I've been looking at the, the layout of the VCDL membership, and Richmond is a very is a very big piece. It's like the second or third biggest chunk of the VCDL membership is right here in Richmond. So I think we're at the point where yeah, we maybe we need to have regular scheduled meetings. Just like we do in Northern Virginia, yeah, and uh, and I can give up any hope of having a real job. Yeah, okay, okay, and uh, all right. Anyhow, the um, do spread out and go to the various restaurants. Let's let's give them all, you know, spread out as much as we can. Uh, we're we're going to ask the EMs to uh, to go. To the okay, to the to the Capitol uh, Ale House, um, the balloon. Believe it or not, this is America. Okay, as Americans, we don't tend to give up really easily. That's how kind of we became the country we are. They're taking the balloon and they're tying it to three trucks. <laughs> so either we're going to see a replay of that little thing in Colorado with the three trucks go over, with a bunch of people chasing after them, going, "Oh my God, my truck!" Or or the balloon is actually going to go up there and actually hang in the air for a little bit. On YouTube. Uh, all, all, considering how much money we paid for the signs, uh, you know, I, I would like to kind of see it there for a little bit. Because <laughs> we're not getting our money back on those signs. So. However, you will probably see this floating over the General Assembly. So, uh, on Lobby Day. Yeah, and do start plugging Lobby Day. Third Monday in January. It's always Martin Luther King birthday. Mark it on your calendar. Talk to your fellow gun owners. Talk to your family because I can tell you what they're coming after the gun shows big time this year they're really trying to come after it and we need to show up there because when we do that that is such a powerful message when you look down the halls that we've been able to derail them every year we can't take it for granted that we can always stop it we've got to make sure that we do that so do do uh, do do remember lobby day for me and I uh, Bruce wanted to say one thing before we wrap one two Three. Yeah.